What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and this has been an interesting week with uh, Elon Musk seemingly seemingly on the ropes, essentially, once some um, rumors started swirling that the Apple App Store might actually remove Twitter, except for one thing. People forgot that Elon Musk is super-duper rich and super-duper well-connected, and it only took a little bit of time before things completely backfired, before people like... Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Netflix, the uh, the CEO of Spotify, uh, a whole bunch of massive companies come out came out against Apple, and Elon managed to leverage the government against them, completely smacking them down. When everyone thought for sure this was the fight he was going to lose, for you, they were for sure that this was going to sink Elon Musk and Twitter. Except it didn't. In fact, it made it stronger. And we're gonna get into that after a super quick word from this video sponsor, MetaPCs. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, MetaPCs. Look, you've been around, you know that I've been talking about MetaPCs for a very long time. In fact, it's the primary computer I use, but it's not just because they're a sponsor. It's for so many more reasons. They have fully customizable, configurable PCs and all the hardest to find parts in stock and ready to go. They also have ready to ship PCs ready for you today. Here's a couple of reasons why I like MetaPCs. First and foremost, it's veteran ownership. MetaPCs is a veteran owned business. One of Meta's owners has served both in Afghanistan and Iraq and received a purple heart for his service. Meta also employs military veterans in Meta's operations center and also provides systems to veterans going back to school to help them re-enter the workforce all across the United States. They offer financing. It has 100% US based sales and support. And when you receive your PC, it's ready to go right out of the box. You don't have to get complicated and set things up. You just plug it all in and you're ready to rock. And on top of that, MetaPCs is offering you, my viewer, a huge discount when you use the link in the description or you use promo code THEQUARTERING. If you use my code at checkout, not only do you save money, but you support my content and a company that will not bow to cancel culture. So maybe you're not ready to pick up a new computer today, but when you are, remember to go to metapcs.com and use promo code THEQUARTERING to support me and to save money. And everybody wins. Obviously you may not be in the market this instant, but when you are, MetaPCs is the computer I use, it's the laptop I use, it's the computer I recommend to friends and family, and my promo code will save you some cash. Did Elon Musk meet with Tim Cook? Tycoon post video claiming that Apple boss gave him a tour of the HQ as it's claimed Musk's fit Twitter faces being axed from the App Store. Twitter CEO Elon Musk claims to have met with Apple boss Tim Cook as rumors swirl that social media app could be banned from Apple and Google over its new content moderation policies, which as far as I understand is no different than YouTube or Facebook at this point. Right, so he wrote, he tweeted, thanks Tim for taking me around Apple's beautiful headquarters. Musk posted alongside a video he claims showed him strolling around the firm's stunning One Infinite Loop Global Headquarters in California. Now, it's interesting that this article is wording it as if Elon's lying about that, which we know he didn't because he continued to tweet later on. Musk called out Apple and CEO Cook on November 28th after the company halted advertisements on the social media platform. Quote, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Musk wrote, do they hate free speech in America? What's going on here, Tim? Responding to the American commentator Liz Wheeler's tweet that she that he should create his own smartphone if Apple and Google boot him from the App Store, Musk replied that he would do so if there is no other choice. To be totally honest with you, I wish he would anyway. You know, I, I kind of wish there would just be another company that would do it. It's like people can't keep relying on Elon Musk to fix everything, to, to you know make everyone's problems go away. But, you know, and at some point too, like, you know, there'll be some questions around how much control Elon has, you know, like, oh, he has the phone company, he has the, the cars and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I think a third option would be great. The billionaire then continued on an Apple rampage and called the company out for censorship. Apple has also threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. He later added, who else has Apple censored, Musk wrote. He then posted a poll about whether or not Apple should punish all, publish, punish all censorship, and this is a typo, publish all censorship actions. It has taken that effect customers to which a majority of voters said yes and later called up the tech store for applying a secret 30% tax on store-bought purchases. Now, we know that a lot of people get around this. Spotify, Amazon, and now Twitter look like they're only going to 
allow people to sign up for, for example, Twitter Blue using Twitter's website, which would mean that the App Store will miss out on the 30% per month fee. Now, what's crazy is that's a lot of dimp. That's a lot of money. I mean, Apple's taking $2.40 out of every $8 in perpetuity. I don't know if they get that. I think it's they get half of that percent on renewals. But still, that's a way too big of a piece of the pie. So Elon just is probably only going to let people sign up for Twitter Blue on their website, which is what I would do too. Now, we do know that Elon did speak with Tim, uh, Tim Cook, and wrote, good conversation. Among other things, we resolved the misunderstanding about Twitter potentially being removed from the App Store. Tim was clear that Apple never considered doing so. Now, what we can say is, you know, what we can point out, point to, is that this ban amnesty thing, uh, at least in terms of big names, hasn't really been happening. Uh, we know that that was probably without, you know, unceremoniously or quietly put on hold, which I'm fine with being on hold, but just not forever. For, for right now, what I think is the most important thing for Elon to do is to roll out new features and get people paying $8 a month. That's what his number one focus should be. Uh, then, also while he's doing that, removing shadow banning, removing deboosting stuff, removing um, things that you know people hate about Twitter, making the app faster, making it more accessible. Um, and then you can start looking at banning people or reinstating accounts, stuff like that. Or you know, you start with the start with the plebs. By the way, you know all the people that had you know their old accounts with maybe a couple hundred followers or 10 followers or something, and they got banned, they want those accounts back, bring those people back. Uh, I'm sure they would love to have their, uh, their accounts back. But now this has spiraled. This has turned into one of those instant regret scenarios because now Mark Zuckerberg joins Musk in criticizing Apple's iron grip on the App Store. During a speech at the New York Times DealBook Summit, Zuckerberg said that Apple is the only platform where one company can control what apps get on the device, a situation he characterized as neither sustainable nor good. The founder also noted that other systems such as Windows and Android do not exercise such aggressive gatekeeping. Meta controls three of the top four social networking platforms on the App Store, including WhatsApp, Messenger, and Facebook. Twitter ranks first in the App Store's news category. Musk, who officially acquired Twitter last month <laughs> and desires to pivot the social media company's business plan towards a subscription-based model, said that Apple, which levies 30% fee on in-app purchases, enforces a functional tax on the internet. The entrepreneur previously said that Apple has threatened to withhold Twitter from the App Store, also noting that they pulled back their $25 million a quarter in advertising. But it gets worse now. Because now you had Governor Ron DeSantis asserting that a potential move to delist Twitter would constitute a significant abuse of power from Apple. He's providing free speech, and so if Apple responds to that by nuking them from the App Store, I think it would be a huge, huge mistake. The governor said, noting that a response from Congress could be warranted. And this is a guy that very likely could be running for president in six months. How about Spotify CEO? I think it's Daniel Eck. Spotify CEO joins Elon Musk's uh, attack on Apple over its App Store for giving itself every advantage while stifling competition. Interesting. So you have Apple, Facebook, Twitter, three of the top 10, oh, actually Instagram and WhatsApp, right? Six of the top 10 apps going after the App Store now. Spotify CEO has joined Elon Musk in his attack against Apple over the App Store for giving itself every advantage while stifling competition. On Monday, Elon Musk criticized the 30% fee. We all know this. I don't care about the fee as much as I care about the gatekeeping. Now, Eck, which he claims is a bully, has given itself every advantage while at the same time stifling innovation and hurting consumers. Apple acts in self-interest, but doesn't allow, doesn't seem to care about the law or courts, he wrote on Twitter, highlighting the March 8th tweet from the Coalition of App Fairness, which started stated Apple did not comply with Dutch antitrust orders. This is bad behavior. This bad behavior is far-reaching, as Elon Musk recently pointed out. Not widely understood, but there's been a lot of talk. Talk is helpful, but action is needed. Now, understand that Daniel Eck is also the guy that has, you know, outside of, you know, removing a bunch of um, Joe Rogan shows upon launching uh, Joe Rogan on Spotify, 
the Spotify CEO has numerous times stood up against um, censorship and has, has stood by Joe Rogan and suffered the kind of the slings and arrows uh, that he would fa that he faced, you know? So, I mean, I think this has been a colossal backfire for Apple because if you, if you end up getting Zuckerberg, Eck, and Elon Musk saying, hey, look, we're not going to submit to this ridiculous 30% tax you put on our app, that would be like the best case scenario. Then when you have DeSantis ringing in and other conservative politicians, should be Democrats too, but they don't care. Maybe they'll care more now. Maybe suddenly they'll start caring because we had that idiot Elizabeth Warren uh, yesterday suddenly, where is that tweet? Suddenly caring about um, one person having too much power on the internet. Here she is. Senator Elizabeth Warren on Elon Musk changes the Twitter. One human should, be, should not be able to go into a dark room by himself and decide, oh, that person gets heard from, that person doesn't. That's not how it should work. But she was fine when it was Prague Argawal. She was fine when it was Jack Dorsey. <laughs> She's literally describing what happened on Twitter before Musk took over. The irony. No, it isn't. That's what's been happening for years. She just didn't have a problem with it because they were silencing the, quote, right people, in her mind, discussing hypocrisy. Well, maybe suddenly the Democrats will start to care. I think um, Tim, Tim Cook might have overplayed his hand here, and uh, Elon put the smack down. And it's going to be interesting to see, now that things have settled down today, if he can actually start working on some new features. I like that. The controversy is great for the channel and reporting on it, but I'd also like to see some new features and see some reason to say good things about Twitter, not just Elon getting in fights. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe so you stay connected. Now enjoy this Christmas thingy. But as long as you love me so, let it snow. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. All right, we are in day one, and this is a Pokemon advent calendar. I have a bunch of different ones. You'll find fun little Easter eggs on the end of each of my videos until Christmas Day, which I, I'd be curious to see what usually you get something pretty cool here, and the 15th looks pretty big. Um, where's the 25th? Where's Christmas? Wait a minute. There's the 23rd. Wait a minute. Where's Christmas? Oh, it's the 24th. Okay, I see. Okay. Well, let's get after it. Day one. What do we got? Oh. If I can get it out of here. I don't know all the names of all the Pokemon, so don't get mad at me. I just thought it would be a fun little thing to do uh, that would involve, like, me cutting up my hands terribly. Ah! I don't know the name of this guy. It looks like an apple pie. Apple pie, piosaur? I don't know. But well, that's the first gift in this Pokemon calendar. Stay tuned for the day two tomorrow.